Let's talk about smart materials in Substance Painter. So normal materials can be applied to your models and they kind of just paint the model with a generic or general material that can be very customizable. But the problem with the way it's applied is it's not very editable. So if you want something where you can control the results more, smart materials can do that. And each smart material has its own parameters. So window, views, shelf. So pull the shelf up. So kind of similar to how materials can have different properties and different textures, smart materials can as well. And they can also have effects applied using smart masks, which effectively analyze the model and look at its bake information to produce cer certain customizable results. So if we drag and drop this castle worn stone smart material that I made last night onto this castle model, you can see that it adds different color. It adds like texture, it adds height, it adds shadows in some of the dark sections and all of it's fully customizable within this folder. So the difference between a material and a smart material is that a smart material can contain smart masks, which look at the bake when it produces effects. And it can also have any number of effects included in a folder. Whereas with a material, it's just a material and that's it. So it's kind of just like a texture with that can, you know, can still have height. It can still have uh, normal and roughness and all these other properties. But with a smart material, you can customize on like a layer by layer level exactly what you want in your model. So each one of these layers does something different and I can customize that result. And I can always add and remove layers and then edit these layers. So for example, if I wanted to edit the shadows, I can click on the dirt smart mask. I can go to the dirt mask here and I can reduce the dirt level or increase the dirt level. And you can see the effect dynamically happening. And the nice thing about these smart materials is that they can be reused on your other projects. And then you can customize them per asset. So like, let's say I wanted to make a bunch of rocks with this type of appearance. I could do that with smart materials. Now, some of these aren't filled in all the way. And what I was gonna do is hand paint them, but I probably could have just sculpted the, the high poly model a little bit better so that there's like more seams here. So it creates the brickwork better. So that would save me work and texturing. Uh, but generally, if you use smart materials, if you have a bake file, you can get a lot of interesting results and good results from that bake file using smart materials. And you don't have to do as much texture work because then you can just spend more time in the sculpt. Uh, but alternatively, you can always spend more time, less time in the sculpt and more time in the texture to get the exact results you want. So it's really just like a balancing act. And of course we can add to this, we can mask this. We can also individually mask like parts of this by creating like a folder and then dropping them in there and then adding a mask. Uh, but basically smart materials allow you to control the properties, like the texture properties of an object. And it also uses bake information. And you can actually see what bake information it uses if you go down to the image inputs. So you can see here it's looking for curvature, AO, uh, world space normal, and position. And you can actually check each thing. So for example, if I delete from my texture set, this is the bake. If I start deleting this, it'll start losing detail from the smart material because it won't know where to assign those details. So just removing curvature does this. So now this looks more like a normal material, right? Cause this is, this is how like a normal material operates. It doesn't care about specific details and it can't really do anything with those specific details. It just kind of slaps it on your model. So you can see the upside of using smart materials and using bake files. And the other thing too, is this is still a very low poly model. I believe it's like 180 quads. So if I actually just like click here, click on this and then I can click on the polygon fill 
I can go to like base color. So you can see the polygon fill. You can actually see the model. The model is very low detailed. It's very simple and it's just, you know, a bunch of boxes essentially. But because we have bake information and I sculpted a high detail version of this model that I baked, we can get these details immediately. And they can be customized too. Like that's the power that's the power of smart materials. So if I want to adjust parts of the model or parts of the texture, I can do that. And some details, like it depends on how it's set up, will be more prominent. And also the properties, like how you set it up, how you set the mask up, like all these things. You can see there's like a mask generator. You can invert. So you can see this produces a drastically different result just by inverting this. So if I went to the shadows, wait, that was the shadows. If I go to like one of these, we can try that. Let's try the shadows now. So that's what inverting the shadows does. Now it looks like the surface is worn and the, the, like the innermost parts that aren't as close to the surface seem to be like discolored or maybe this is the original color. So you can get pretty interesting results just by playing around with smart masks and smart materials. And this isn't a finished result, but this is just like to get me started. I still have a lot of painting to do on this particular model. I'm gonna paint in a lot of mid-tones and stuff like that uh, to um, make the stone work stand out. And then I'm gonna manually paint in a lot of the uh, brickwork, like the seams and stuff like that. So yeah, that's it for the basics of smart materials video. I feel like they're pretty powerful. Definitely worth talking about. Definitely something to cover on this channel. So yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next one.